Hey, Michael from Xano here. In this video, I'm going to go over a snippet which you'll be able to add directly to your instance and then your workspace at xano.com slash snippets. And what this snippet is going to do, it's going to take in data, transform that data into a CSV format, then take that CSV formatted data, actually create a CSV file, and then take the metadata and be able to store it into a Xano database table as an attachment. So previously I've done something similar in a snippet where we've taken in data, transformed it into a CSV, and then have actually made it so the API endpoint when you run it triggers the download for that file so you can open it and have it locally. This one is we're actually going to store that file in your Xano database, uh, which then you can obviously go ahead and download directly from there or use it in other parts of your project because it's stored in your Xano database. So let's go ahead and look at what I have built here. So our input is this JSON array called data. And we're gonna do that so you can take in data from anywhere. So it's super flexible and I'll show you how you can do that because we're starting in a custom function here. So we'll be able to insert that into anywhere and you'll see all that. So in my function stack here, the first thing we're gonna do is get the columns or the headers for our CSV. And we're just going to take our input, which is called data and just get the very first index, and that'll pull uh, the keys or the columns that we need for our CSV. We then create an empty array, and what's going to go in here is all the data for our rows. Next, we want to actually get the data for those rows, so we need to loop through our input, which is an array, probably an array of objects, and then for each item, we're gonna get the values and call that single row, and then we're gonna insert each one of those single rows into our entire array of rows. So we're left with basically an array of our column headers and then all our data in our rows. So once we have that, I can create this variable starting with my array of columns called columns. I use the CSV create filter and the rows I've aptly named rows. And we can leave the defaults here for separator, enclosure, and escape. So in the other snippet, we've now, we would have defined some custom headers at this point so that the API endpoint can actually gen generate that downloadable file right away. But we're actually gonna store this now that we have this in our Xano database. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create this file resource with that data, as you can see, CSV data here, and then create the attachment. And this gives us the metadata, which we're actually able to insert into uh, a Xano database table. So let's go ahead and run this. I just have some very example data here, as you can see, very basic, uh, just a few different rows. But if I go ahead and run this, you can see we'll actually get the metadata. And we know in Xano that if you use your Xano domain and combine it with this path, we'll get a URL. And that's what we used in the previous snippet for to make it downloadable. So let's go ahead. I have this right here. I have my Xano domain. I'm just concatenating that path. I'll just show you what that is in the return here. I'll go ahead and save this. So if I run this, I get this URL. And we know if we just copy this and go to it or paste it in a new tab, what's going to happen is I have my downloadable CSV file right there for me. But obviously that's not exactly what we're doing in this uh, snippet. We actually wanna store this in a table. So I'm just gonna hide this once again and let's go ahead and make sure we're returning attachment here. And I, I'll disclude this from the snippet. I just wanted to show you. And I'm discluding it because Xano domain is gonna be different from any, anyone. If you wanna build that in, just know you just take your Xano domain and the path. So let's actually look at how we can take existing data from our Xano database table, make it into the CSV and store it into another database table. So. For example, I have this movies table here. It has a thousand records of just random movies and an overview, the release date. So let's go ahead and transform this into a CSV file now. So I'm going to go to my API in the CSV group right here and in this endpoint. So I don't have anything in here yet. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna actually query all those records from movies and we'll just call that movies one. And the next thing, I want to insert that function I built that takes all that data 
and creates it into an attachment. So I'll go ahead and just grab that. And so now we need to map up the input. So I'm getting all that data from my movies variable right there. So I'll just go ahead and map it to that. So we know the output of this function here is going to be our attachment. So I can go ahead and now add that to my file table. And it's a simple table here. I just have one field and we'll just get the output of function one. Let me go ahead and save that. And I can delete this response because I don't need to return anything right now. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and just quickly run this. Okay, we see the success comes back. But let's check out our database and let's see if we actually have that in here. So if we go into file, well, we see a new file, but let's actually open it so we know if this is a CSV as we wanted it. So I'm just going to go ahead and download this. And then I'll simply open this. And let me drag my numbers application here so you can see into the screen. But as you can see, we would get this CSV file. Obviously, numbers formats this pretty nicely for me in a table format. Um, but we do have our CSV file. So that's pretty cool that that can all be done in the Xeno function stack very quickly. So let's go back. There's one other thing I want to implement here for you guys. I'm going to go to functions. And I'm going to actually allow you to be able show you easily how to define the name of your CSV file. So right now I have it hard coded in here as new file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to do percent s here and you'll see why in a second and I'll make sure to have dot CSV. Go ahead and save that. And then in my inputs here, let's say file name and I'll go ahead and hit save. And so if I come back into my create file resource function, I can apply this sprintf filter now. And my argument will just be the file name input. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save that. So now whatever you choose to specify here in your input for file name will be the name of that file. Of course, if you decide you want to go back in and hard code that, that's perfectly fine. But I just want to give you that flexibility. I'll make sure to include that in the snippet as well. And hopefully that's all helpful, it makes sense, and you can implement this into your Xeno project. So thanks for watching, and hope you can use the snippet.